everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Last Cast Adventures. I am your host, Daniel. And in this episode, I'm going to be down in Miami area, or South Florida. We're going to be catching peacock bass. I'm down there with my buddy, Logan. We're using both fly fishing techniques and spin fishing techniques. Logan was using a little white paddle tail. I would call it a, I think a Z-Man is the one he was using. And I was using uh, my fly called the Jones Tantalizer. Both are really good baits. Um, the tantalizer was actually just kind of tearing it up that day. Just had a good good time down there. It was a nice drive and just some really good fishing. Hope you enjoy. Interesting. <laughs> good shooting. Man. He got it, and I was trying to go for its buddy. The cool thing with peacock bass is when they're nesting or just sitting in a certain area, you can bring your bait by them, I mean, a hundred times. And they could go after it, they could nibble on it, they could smack it, and you know, they could do whatever they want to it. That's close. Ah, oh, dang it! <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Ah, oh, it was very close to a doubleheader. And, uh, they just, they go and they will absolutely destroy it because they are very territorial and it makes it real easy to get them so that's what we were doing here and he happened to get it and obviously i lost mine if i remember correctly his was either 16 or 17 inches a really big good looking one and they have those big humps on the head and it just really adds to them and they're just a beautiful beautiful fish yeah so this is the same spot nice. um got a little bit sunnier and logan's hooked up oh that was so close to being a double header It was actually a different day and sort of a different season. As you can tell, the water levels were a lot higher here, and the peacock bass were a lot more plentiful and a lot smaller. But, I mean, hey, who can complain when you're catching peacock bass? Now, I know that I was using the Jones Tantalizer for, I'm pretty sure, most of my fish. I think it was actually the same fly for most of my fish that day. I actually caught the most I've ever caught, which was 30 peacocks. And that was in, uh, yeah, that was just in a couple hours. I managed to catch 30 peacock bass down in Miami. So it was definitely worth the trip. I won't bite now. You don't have to fly with you, do you? I'm actually using my 8 weight fly rod here, which I normally wouldn't be because I do have a 4 weight fly rod, but the original plan was to go for tarpon, which I would need the 8 weight, but uh, yeah, when we got to the, our tarpon spots, it just, they weren't there. No idea what happened, so we switched it up, we went for peacocks, and it turned out to be the right call, that's for sure. The fight was, I mean, still fun, because anything on fly is always fun, but it would have been really really fun on the four-way fly rod
This might be my smallest peacock. So, as you can see, I'm not using a rod at this point. I'm actually using what they call a Cuban yo-yo. It's just a bunch of line wrapped around this plastic spool sort of thing and you kind of just cast it out. It is hard to do and most of the time, I mean it's not really worth it, but it's kind of cool to say, hey I caught a fish on a hand line. But I figured, hey, there were so many peacocks that were here that I might as well try it out. And the range is the range is only about like 10 to 15 feet if you're lucky. But uh, I was trying it. Couldn't really hurt, you know. Caught enough peacocks at this point, so I tried it out. But I've caught bass, peacock bass, and snook on the hand line. It's more of a challenge, and I always like to challenge myself if I can. After taking a couple videos with nothing happening, I actually turned off the GoPro because I didn't really want to waste my battery life while I was out here. And sure enough, right after that, I ended up getting this guy. So, I mean, hey, it works. It just takes a little bit more time than, you know, you might be expecting. But uh, I would honestly say just stick to a rod and reel of sorts. Fly rod for sure, but definitely a rod and reel is just a lot easier. As far as baits go for peacock bass, the Jones Tantalizer has a lot of movement in the tail, so it just kind of draws them out, much like it does with every fish. So that's why it was just killer. Uh, they really like anything that kind of looks like a tilapia or a cichlid. It's just, I guess, something about the colors of them, you know, and just kind of invading their personal space. I mean, they pretty much hit anything. I've caught them on flukes before. I've caught them on... Well, Logan caught them on paddle tails, people have caught them on worms, uh, sometimes poppers too, I've caught them on rattle traps, anything that's just either loud and obnoxious, or interesting looking, or just in their face. They'll hit any of those pretty much, and then if you find some like moving water, which we did later on in the day, I don't think I have any videos of it, but um... I was able to catch a few on flukes because they were where there was sort of a dam or reservoir where the water was flowing and they were just popping kind of like snook wood under a snook light at night and I was just tossing the fluke up under the bridge and they were just destroying my fluke so it kind of depends where you're finding them but for the most part they're not the hardest to catch and then if you're unsure of what lures to use you could always use live bait they like their shiners that's for sure, whether they're, um, I mean, just golden shiners or small, you know, pretty much anything shiny, alive, I don't think they're really picky on them. They just, they kind of attack, whether they're even going for them for food or just because they're in their face. Depends on the fish, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> My leader, so yeah, they are an absolute aggressive fish. right beside you. There we go. That's the biggest of the day. On that tantalizer. Mmm, she's pretty. Cool if I get a pick.
Now concerning our Florida peacock bass, which is a subspecies of the peacock bass that people catch in South America, you don't really need to have like thick leader. I don't know about over there. Never been over there to catch one. Definitely want to go and catch one because they are two to three to four times the size of the ones we're catching at least. Um, but yeah, definitely want to do that. But as far as concerning our peacock bass here, you don't really need that much pound test. Like, uh, you can catch them on 15 or 20 pound test for the most part. I mean, maybe they might fray the line after some time, but it's very similar to just regular bass fishing. Same kind of tackle that you would use to catch largemouth bass. The same tackle you could use to catch the peacock bass. It's just the way it works, and it's really nice because there's nothing about having a beef up your tackle or beef up your leader you just keep going and using a simple line and it works I'm scared to fall in because I have my gun on me and my phone but mainly my gun you stuck? I can possibly reach that I know that some people may give me crap about it, but I highly recommend Crocs when you're fishing. They think they're ugly, and they just think they're uncomfortable, but honestly, they are very comfortable. And very beneficial when it comes to walking in and out of water like this. For the most part, the grip on the ground is, I mean, pretty decent, but... You know, they're they're lightweight, they're comfortable, and they hold up for against oysters and other sharp rocks and things like that. So, get yourself a pair of Crocs if you don't have a pair, but you fish a lot. Just make your life easier, that's all I'm saying. Now these are just a couple photos that I took periodically throughout the day of several different peacock bass just to kind of show off how pretty they can be. Anyways guys, like I said, I highly recommend going after peacock bass if you haven't before. If you have any questions or comments or want to know anything about it, uh, at least for the South Florida goes, you know, message me or comment and I'll get back to you on it. Again guys, please subscribe and thanks for watching Last Cast Adventures.